Welcome to my first TED talk about chatbots and artificial intelligence. Well, before I start, do you all know what artificial intelligence chatbots actually are? Maybe not. But then let's ask Einstein, our intelligent assistant. Einstein, what is an AI chatbot? Artificial intelligence is about making computers act more like humans. All artificial intelligence designs are inspired by the human brain. AI chatbots are software programs infused in your apps or websites. Unlike command-based chatbots, AI chatbots use natural language processing NLP, to reply. The chatbots get smarter with time as more they answer the questions, more they learn from their past experiences. They need a huge pile of learning data through which they can process. Humans can talk to AI chatbots via written text or speech. Thank you very much, Einstein. So now I hope you all have an idea about what AI chatbots actually are. But why should you invest in this new technology? Let me show you some examples where AI chatbots are already in use and how they might change the way we do our business. And please keep in mind that the following four examples are only four examples out of hundreds of examples where AI chatbots are already in use. So the first idea is to save time and money with chatbots in customer service centers. According to a survey led by Salesforce, approximately 65% of all customer service centers already use chatbots in order to answer simple and repeating questions. So while the chatbot can answer to the easy questions, the service agents have now more time in order to solve complex problems and answer difficult questions. And in the end, they will be more efficient and your business can save time and money. The second use case is about generating more qualified leads and higher revenues. So why don't you use a chatbot on your website that asks your website's visitors why they, they are visiting your page? And depending on, your, on their answer, you can send them, or the chatbot can send them suitable content like a white paper and ask for their email address. And of course, your sales team now have more time to contact these qualified leads. And in the end, it will result in higher revenues. The third idea is about creating a better user experience. I guess you all have website visitors who leave your page because they couldn't find what they are looking for. But in fusing the chatbot technology, you can ask your website visitors what they are looking for. And depending on their answer, the chatbot can guide them to the right location where they will find their answer and they will be happy. And the last use case I want to show you is about after hour support. So in times of instant messaging, sharing pictures and videos all the time, everything seems to be just one click away from us. So we expect that businesses answer immediately to our queries. And with chatbots, you can offer a 24-hour customer support. You will decrease the average time of responses and, of course, you will meet your clients' expectations. Now, have I sparked your curiosity in AI chatbots? And now you want to build your own chatbot? Then let me help you. So what do you need? First, you need a use case. What should your intelligent chatbot do for you, for your business, or for your clients? As I showed before, it can be customer service, it can be lead generation. And once you have defined the use case, you need to define the goals and your target group. And then you need data. You need a lot of data. Imagine, how should your intelligent chatbot know how to behave and what to answer. Of course, you need to train it. And that's a bit like training a little child. Do you know how a clever child learns? 
Okay, then let's ask Einstein again. Einstein, how does a clever child learn? A clever child observes its parents how they manage individual activities. He tries to record every movement as detailed as possible. And if it feels it has understood how the individual activity works, it tries to copy the individual steps. Maybe he notices that not everything is perfect yet, so he watches his parents again and repeats the process. Until the result is the same as with its own parents. Imaging the scenario of dressing up. Every morning they see how their mother puts on her clothes and once they feel confident enough they do it on their own. Okay, thank you Einstein. And now let's transform this to our intelligent chatbots. You need to give them a lot of training data. For instance, if you want to develop a chatbot for customer service, you can train them with emails between customer service agents and clients or with recordings of phone calls. But please pay attention to misunderstanding and pay attention that you have the right data. Let me tell you a funny story. Two years ago, I was sitting in a train in Germany and in Germany, the floors are covered with carpet. So when a young lady, maybe two years old, entered the train, she took her shoes off and her mother was like, sorry, what are you doing there? And the clever child answered, but mom, look, there is carpet. And we always take our shoes off when there is carpet. So you see the problem? The little girl was trained that when she has carp there is carpet, it means that she's sitting at home. So this time she missed that she's sitting in a train. Hopefully next time she will learn that she can only take her shoes off when there is carpet and she's in a fixed house. And with chatbots you will face the same problems. So you really need to have the right data. So now I hope you all know what an AI chatbot is. You know why you should use them and you know how to build them. Then let's have a quick look into the future. I know, we cannot predict the future, but since I'm observing this topic since a long time, I have some interesting ideas for you. The first one is actually quite obvious. The actual chatbots will become a better understanding. So at the moment, there are a lot of chatbots that say they are clever because they have certain algorithms integrated, but when we start talking with them, they only understand little of what we actually want. So here, I'm very sure that the data scientists and developers will improve these kind of chatbots. The second idea is about chatbots starting talking to each other. So imagine once it is not me who's talking to the chatbot of my favorite online shop, but it is my chatbot who's talking to the other chatbot asking where my new dresses are. Well, how would it be? There are already first tests where chatbots started to talk to each other and even abuse each other. So I think we are not so far away from this idea. The third idea I have for you is about personal AI assistance in our ears. So I think you all know these little headphones. What are you doing with them? Making phone calls, listen to music, listen to TED talks. But what if these headphones become our personal intelligent assistant. Imagine, I'm at a client, it's 11 o'clock, the meeting was scheduled for one hour, I'm standing up, going to the exit of the building, and my intelligent assistant says this. Unfortunately, you missed your train by five minutes. You can now wait 55 minutes for the next one, but then you will miss your next appointment or I will order the one for 50 Swiss francs. However, your bank account is already in the red this month. Well, maybe she wouldn't let it go so far. Maybe she would have informed me 15 minutes earlier that today I should better finish the meeting 5 minutes earlier in order to catch the right train. But how would that be? And the last idea is about intelligent assistance in our walls at home, in our entire buildings. Imagine we are at home 
and there is no longer this little black box that answers to the name Alexa, no white box called Google Home Assistant, but the intelligence is integrated in our walls, in our buildings at home. And we can just sit there at the couch asking, how will the weather be? What do I have in my fridge? Uh, please turn on the washing machine. Half a year ago, I had an interesting conversation with some researchers who are traveling a lot in Asia. And they told me that in Asia, the architectures and builders are already thinking about these ideas. So it might be interesting. And now I want to finish my TED talk with some open questions about culture. What do you think? How can we train cultural behavior to a chatbot? Do you think that we will need Asian, European, American, Australian, African chatbots? Or can we say that a chatbot, which is actually a machine, doesn't need to have cultural treats? Think about it. If you want, you can email me your answer. And I hope to see you next time.